This episode of the Outside Health and Fitness Podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Get exclusive rewards and more by visiting outsidehealthandfitness.com forward slash support. Outside Health and Fitness Podcast, episode 160, Winter Kids and the Downhill 24. You know, playing in the snow doesn't end when you're too old to build snowmen or when you don't find snow angels fun anymore. There's still a lot more to do out there. Welcome to the Outside Health and Fitness Podcast. We're getting outside the box, outside our comfort zone, and outside and in shape. If you're bored with the same old fitness routine at the gym, and you're ready to try something new, then this is the show for you. We're exploring new and fun ways to get fit on the trail, on the water, on the slopes, and outside. Hi, this is Steve Stearns from Outside Health and Fitness, and thank you for joining me for another episode. If you're new to the show, we like to stay fit and active by having fun outside. We like to ride, slide, run, walk, hike, bike, golf, roll, swim, and ski. If it's fun outside and it keeps us healthy, we love it. So if you're like us and you like to have fun outside, then you found the right place. You know, winter can be a time of year when adults and kids spend more time indoors, but it doesn't have to be that way. You know, there are plenty of fun things to do outside in the winter and ways to stay active. Unfortunately, too many kids just don't have the opportunity to experience these things like skiing, snowboarding, and snowshoeing. And we know if you get started early, these fun winter activities can become a lifelong habit. On today's show, I have a really special guest. My son, Xander, is coming on the show to share a really cool program that helps kids in Maine discover how much fun winter can be. On today's show, you'll discover a great organization dedicated to helping kids stay active in the winter, a unique fundraising event where teams use skis, snowboards, and coffee to compete around the clock, and how you can get involved. Outside Health and Fitness.com. Now, before we get into my interview with Xander, I wanted to let you know what's coming up this week on my new show, Funky Fitness Now. This week, we're talking about insane fitness obsessions. You know how some people just take it way too far, like using a feeding tube to lose weight or spending all of your free time strength training. Here's a clip. Welcome to Funky Fitness Now. I'm Steve. And I'm Jessica, and we host Funky Fitness Now. Yeah, you're walking around with a tube up your nose. Why are you doing that? To look good? Oh, yeah, that's working for you. Join us each week at funkyfitnessnow.com. On iTunes, Stitcher, and other top podcast networks. Stay fit and funky. So my very special guest today is my son, Xander Stearns. Xander is an avid outdoor sports enthusiast. In fact, if it requires a board, he does it. From skateboarding to wakeboarding to snowboarding, he's always outside staying active and having fun. Xander is on the Long's Board Shop team, and he's going to be riding for 24 hours in the Winter Kids Downhill 24 event at Sugarloaf Mountain, Maine in March. I asked Andrew to come on the show and talk about Winter Kids and the Downhill 24. So let's get right into it. All right, so Xander, you are raising some money for this organization called Winter Kids. Can you give us an idea what that's all about? Yeah, so Winter Kids is this awesome group that helps children develop healthy, lifelong habits through education and fun uh, during the winter months. So they're just trying to get kids out Mm -hmm. and playing during the winter months so they're not stuck inside playing video games or you know wasting the day when there's tons of fun to be had out there in the snow yeah what sort of things do they get the kids they get them doing snowboarding and that kind of stuff yeah that's the main idea we try to get guys out there uh try to get some kids out there sledding or tubing or skiing snowboarding snowshoeing cross-country skiing really just being active in the snow whether you're trying to just go for a stroll in the woods or you're trying to get as fast as you can downhill on some skis. It's kind of just going out there and having fun, doing whatever makes you happy, and uh, just staying active during the winter month. Last weekend, on Saturday, they had an event in Payson Park in Portland. Mm -hmm. They had all kinds of fun stuff. They had sledding going on, and a raft group showed up with all kinds of these (laughs) these big rafts, like 20-person rafts, and kids were sledding down the hill on those. And there's a, uh, a great public park in Portland for snowboarding, I had all kinds of rails set up that were maintained by the town and by kids using it. And it was really cool to showcase to all kinds of young kids. You know, you don't have to go all the way up to Sunday River or Sugarloaf to snowboard. You can do it right in your backyard if you, if you have the drive to go out and hike. It was really cool 
They also did things like Zumba out there in the snow, <laughs> just to show kids that nice. <laughs> if you're moving around, it's not that cold. <laughs> you know, you can warm up if you just do a little exercise. And yeah, they had the Portland Pirates mascot was there, and the wow. L. Bean boot showed up, and they had all kinds of snowshoe demos, and it was pretty fun. That's fantastic. Kids out there moving and dancing and sledding. Makes the winter go by much faster, doesn't it, when you have something to do outside? Absolutely, and it seems a lot less gloomy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, when you spend a little time outside instead of being indoors for all those months. Yeah. I love the raft idea. I think that sounds, I mean, it sounds like someone could get hurt doing the raft idea, but. You know what? It, it looked like someone could get hurt too. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little crazy, but uh, it, it was a lot of fun. They, they did have a guy on the back that would just hold on and soar the steer with his feet, but uh, <laughs> it was great. It was a lot of fun. It was big enough where people could see it and get out of the way before. <laughs> Before they were in harm's way, but yeah, it was a great idea. It was a lot of fun. So the way that you're raising this money is you're you're working with a snowboard shop. Yeah, so I'm on the Longs Board Shop snowboard team, and we are generating. Uh, we're trying to generate as much money as we can for this organization through the Downhill 24 event, which mm. they'll have at Sugarloaf Mountain this year. Yeah, our goal is to have at least one member of our team snowboarding. Uh, for an entire 24 hours. Myself and, and a few other guys are going to try and do it the whole 24 hours. Wow. Uh, we're optimistic, but we are also uh, realizing that, you know, you kind of need to sleep every once in a while. So True. <laughs> we might crash <laughs> physically and <laughs> mentally. As your father, I was going to ask you, are you going to wear a helmet? Oh, yeah. I, I, I try to <laughs> wear a helmet always. Yes. Now, have you done this before, or is this the first time that you've participated in this race? I personally have never done the downhill 24. Uh, my mom did it last year, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe the year before. They the last two years they had them at Mount Abrams. Yeah, and I know a handful of people, including my mom, that did it, and uh, and they had a blast. They said it was a lot of fun. You definitely need to take some naps and <laughs> stay hydrated. Drinking yeah. a lot of water is key. You kind of forget when you get that cold. You forget how thirsty you are. Right. Um, but you got to stay hydrated and you keep moving. And uh, it can be a blast. You get through those night hours. During the day, it's not too bad. But when it's cold out and it's dark, that's the tough, that's that's what, the tough time. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You got to plow through. Tell me again, you know, when is this being held? It's being held in March? March 11th. March 11th. Uh, March 11th into the 12th. It's a Friday into the Saturday. Nice. Excellent. So that, you might actually have some pretty nice spring-like conditions then. You never know, right? That's what I'm hoping for. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to have some warm, some warm conditions. Uh, we're planning on maybe packing a tent or two and mm -hmm. bringing some sleeping bags with us and bringing some warm gear just in case. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see some, some, uh, some warm spring skiing conditions. Yeah, that'd be great. So, so the idea, if you can't ride the entire 24 hours, the idea is that you just kind of, it's almost like a tag team wrestling match, right? You just tag the next guy and, and they go. Yeah. As long as somebody's riding, we are able to qualify for the, the 24 hour uh, event. So nice. if I get too tired, uh, I can take a break as long as someone from my team is still riding the, riding the trails and hitting the lift. Cool. Now, is there actually a race like which team can, can make the most runs or something? Oh yeah. To, to my knowledge, there is certainly a element of competition here. I know that there are people, whoever, whichever team generates the most money, uh, will, be ranked uh the individual fundraisers are also ranked mm -hmm. um so the goal would be for my team to raise more money than all the other teams and of course i'd like to myself raise more money than every other individual so there's lots of competitive elements in that <laughs> sense of fundraising and then uh yeah there's going to be a lot of uh competition to see who can ride the most who can do the longest stretch as well as who can have the the smile on the longest <laughs> yeah. have the most fun throughout the entire 24 hours i think would be the goal do you know how many teams are have signed up for this uh i don't yeah and i think they're still rolling in um i uh -huh. just signed up myself officially uh, last week. Yeah. So I've officially enrolled myself and made it available for people to donate to my individual cause yeah. and in, in that sense contribute to uh, the Longs Board Shop uh, snowboard team. Cool. So uh, I know that teams are popping up left and right. I know last year, uh, I know that Portland Pie Company was one of the top team that fundraised something like $8,000 or something like that. It was wow. quite impressive. Yeah. And I know, I can't remember who the who the gentleman was, but the top fundraiser, uh, individual fundraiser last year, rose almost $5,000. So the Downhill 24, is this a new thing or is this something that they've been doing for a while? 
Can you talk about that a little bit? So they've been doing this for a couple of years already. The first three years that they've done the Downhill 24, they raised over $165,000 for winter kids. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah, it's, it's some serious money. So they must be using this money for um, not only f- just for the programs, but for different types of equipment and tickets and things like that. Oh, yeah. It's all about, it's all about getting kids from towns in Maine that don't have skiing at their, at their front door, getting them to the skiing locations, helping them get outfitted and all the equipment that they need to have fun and be safe. Mm-hmm. And, and getting them back. There's a lot that goes into getting to the mountain along with rentals and the cost of a lift ticket, but the actual transportation there. So this money goes towards all of that and making sure that they're out there having fun and they're properly uh, taken care of. It's, it's, when you're out playing in the snow, you have to have the right equipment. So yeah. it's, uh, it's all about getting kids the opportunity and keeping them safe. How big is Winter Kids? I mean, how many how many kids are involved in the activities and and get to take advantage of the program? I don't think I could ever give you a accurate answer, but I can tell you just last winter that Winter Kids reached at least twenty one thousand kids. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, all, and all Maine local kids. So those are all Mainers, all Maine kids. All Mainers. All Mainers. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's all really for a good cause, and it's it's pretty exciting. It's a great way to do it. It's a lot of fun for us who enjoy yeah. riding out there. Yeah, it probably gives uh, kids something to, you know, some of the kids that are, are just getting started, too, something to look forward to. And someday I want to do that, you know. I want to be able to snowboard and do all those things. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the last two years I heard about the event, I wanted to join myself, and I just never could because of prior obligations and work and and now I finally got it off, so I'm excited to join myself. But I know just from hearing about this event, there are tons of people that are interested in just coming to, to be a part of it. Maybe not to ski for 24 hours, yeah. but they want to come and hang out and, and cheer us on. And, and it's just getting people that don't even ski or ride, just getting them to the mountain for some event. Just getting them away from their home. and Yeah, just get out and do something fun. Check out what Maine has to offer. Right, there's a lot going on during the winter months that... Uh, that well, aren't publicized as much, and it's it's fun to get it out there. It sounds like there's a couple of different things that we should should share here. So, if someone is listening and they want to participate in this downhill 24, how do they do that? Is there is there a spot where they can go sign up? Yeah, so you can go to www.winterkids.org, mm-hmm. and then you can go into under community events, and you can find the downhill 24. And you can register there uh, today. There's a big link. You can register there. If you'd like to just donate uh, to a team Mm -hmm. like Long's Board. (laughs) And like you specifically, right? (laughs) You can go to uh, the Long's Board Shop Facebook page or their website, and you can download, you can donate that way through their links. Or you can go to my own Facebook, Xander Stearns, and click on my link, and you can donate to individually myself, which will in turn go to Long's Board Shop, which of course inevitably ends up in the hands of the Winter Kids organization, who will then put it right back into the community of Maine, making sure our kids are out there staying active during the winter. Nice. Excellent. Well, it's a fantastic program. I mean, I think it's it's really important for, uh, particularly when you're young and you're a kid, to, you know, to experience those things and, and discover those things so that later in life, you know, winter doesn't mean that you're just locked inside the house. You have the opportunity to go outside, do something fun, even look forward to winter. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, when I taught snowboarding at Mount Abrams, I would have lessons for, of all ages from five-year-olds to 35-year-olds. And mm-hmm. I can tell you that the 35-year-olds were much more, they were a little bit more anxious and a little bit more cautious when they were on the board for the first time. Yeah. And that made it harder for them to learn because they weren't, uh, as young as an adventurous and able to bounce back from a fall right. as uh, as the kids are. So getting them out there and, and having them learn while they're young is, is key. And uh, like you said, it's just it's all about giving them the opportunity to get out and, and know that they don't have to be inside just because it's cold and snowy. You know, playing in the snow doesn't end when you're too old to build snowmen or yeah. when you don't find snow angels fun anymore. There's still a lot more to do out there. Yep. And uh, this is a, an important important way to get that message across. 
Hey, Xander, I think you're doing a really awesome thing here. I think it's a great cause, and uh, I, I bet you're going to have a lot of fun. Hopefully you'll drink a bunch of coffee or Coca-Cola or something to keep yourself awake <laughs> so you don't crash into any uh, lifts or anything. But I wish you the best in terms of your fundraising. I'm going to have a link in the show notes to your site, so hopefully you can win your team because it's the, the person who gets the most on the team is the winner, right? That's right. Absolutely. Uh, okay. I'm trying to be on top. So we have to push on that. We'll have to make that happen. And I'll talk to your father <laughs> to see if he will actually donate too. So Yeah, get that bum to donate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Xander. Thank you. I want to thank Xander for coming on the show and sharing the Winter Kids organization and the Downhill 24 with you and I today. If you want to participate in the race or help raise money and sponsor Xander and the Longs Board Shop team, I'll have links in the show notes at outsidehealthandfitness.com forward slash 160. I wanted to take a second and welcome a new member who joined Outside Health and Fitness this week. Hello, Arissa. It is so great to have you here. If you want to join too and help support the show, it is really easy. Just visit outsidehealthandfitness.com forward slash 160. When you visit online, be sure to click the link Become an Outside Health and Fitness Fan and you'll get your free copy of Fit Fast First Thing, my Tabata morning workout with a quick seven-minute routine you can use to start your day off right. Tabata is a great routine and you can even do it with your kids. Heck, you can even do it outside in the snow if you want to. So visit OutsideHealthAndFitness.com forward slash 160. I'm Steve Stearns. Thank you again for listening. Well, that wraps up another episode of the Outside Health and Fitness Podcast. I hope you got something of value from the show today that helps you get outside and in shape. For more on taking your health and fitness outside, visit OutsideHealthAndFitness.com and subscribe to the show. Until next time, I'll see you outside. Outside.